Hello, good morning. My name is Marco Durante. I am director of the biophysics department at GSI Helmut Center in Darmstadt and professor of physics at the University of Darmstadt. And uh, the topic today will be protecting uh, astronauts from space radiation to go to Mars. And concerning the first uh, question here, so the question was, uh, where were you on uh, uh, November 9, 1989? Uh, the answer is here. I was in uh, Berkeley in California uh, at the Lawrence Berkeley lab. And the reason I was there was that I was doing my PhD, actually about the same topic that we will talk about today, the effects of uh, heavy ions. The second question is, which wall does your research break? What are the challenges in this research? And uh, this is the challenge, actually. So the reason why we do this research is that we want to go to Mars. And we want to overcome the main uh, showstopper, the main health risk uh, in building a human colony in Mars, as you see here, and that is radiation. That has been shown, for example, by the uh, Curiosity rover uh, by NASA that measured the uh, radiation during the uh, trip to Mars and on the Mars on, on the Mars surface. And this is to give you an example. I mean, while on Earth we have approximately one millisievert per year, this small small corner here, the sievert, millisievert is the unit of radiation dose. On Mars, we have approximately 200 millisieverts per year, so that's now the square. And while we travel to Mars, we have approximately 700 millisieverts per year. So that's our challenge, that's our problem. How can we go to Mars and still be safe, considering that we have this uh, uh, huge dose uh, during the uh, trip to Mars and on Mars? Third question is what are uh, the essential new findings uh, in this research? Well, this is a simple idea here. How can we reduce the dose going to Mars and living on Mars? The idea is to simulate the cosmic radiation, which is composed by particles using large accelerators, like this one that we have at GSI. If we do this simulation, then we can use shielding material. We can test a new shielding material, like the one we are using now, lithium hydrides, with simulated radiation coming from the accelerator, and we can find the optimal way to protect the astronauts from radiation using these new materials tested at the accelerators. Or we can try to imitate the Earth. We can try to develop an active shielding like the Earth does with the magnetic field. And we see the magnetic field of the Earth, for example, when we see this beautiful aurora borealis, which, is, which are caused by the, by the solar wind captured in the, in the magnetic field, and this gives us this beautiful color. But it's not only beautiful, it's also protective for us from, from the radiation coming from space. So what is the society benefit of this research and what the layman, let's say the mother or the child, could think about this research? Well, to justify this activity saying that we want to go to Mars is certainly important, interesting, is visionary and fascinating, but there is also a much, much more solid and easy to understand benefit for Earth. The same radiation that is such a risk for astronauts in space can be used to treat cancer patients, to sterilize tumors. It's a very effective therapy, use the same heavy ions that are present in space, accelerated with the same accelerators that we use to simulate cosmic radiation on Earth, but now it's directed uh, against the tumors in patients and can sterilize this tumor. It's a therapy already used. Uh, thousands of patients have been already very successfully treated 
uh, in Europe and uh, uh, in the US and in uh, uh, Japan. Which questions remain unanswered? That's uh, always the most difficult question. The main question I would say is to understand the difference between terrestrial radiation, which is like this, you know, it's done of photons, it's x-rays, so it's uh, many, many small particles that hit us every day. The comparison between this situation and this situation, where the cosmic radiation now is done by particles, by charged particles that are heavier and more effective. We can actually see these particles in the cells, as you see here. This is, you see, the, the large circle is a human cell, is a human fibroblast. And in real time, you, you see the time on the top corner, you see two particles going through this nucleus. What you visualize here are the repair enzymes that rush to the site of DNA damage. This in particular is called DNA double strand break and try to repair this damage. What we have to understand is the difference between this kind of damage that we have in space and the normal damage that is used by uh, X-rays on Earth, which is much more sparse and much more uh, uniform uh, in the cell as compared to this, uh, to this part. What did you want to become as a child? Uh, actually, I really wanted to be a superhero, you know? And uh, surprisingly enough, I think I got close. You see this Fantastic Four, uh, they became Fantastic Four because of radiation and that's why I started to be interested in radiation. They were in a spacecraft and they were irradiated with what we call today as solar particle events. And the biological effects are very strange, you know that one becomes stone, this girl becomes invisible at will, my favorite uh, superpower, uh, this can be long, then this becomes a human torch. Uh, this is what we call individual radiosensitivity. So the same dose of radiation can give different effects. We see this in cancer patients, for example. So it's not completely wrong. And actually my uh, readings of superheroes, there is also Hulk, of course, and Spider-Man, all of them were, became superhero thanks to radiation. This never happens in my lab, unfortunately. Every time there is a radiation effect, so you get worse, you get cancer, you get skin erythema, you get nausea, vomit, you never become a superhero. But it's a very interesting topic to study, that's for sure. <laughs>